Hey there, welcome to your Assurity product training video number two. And this is going to be for short term disability. Now, for those of you familiar with another carrier's disability and how they do their um, benefits, it's a slightly different. The other carrier usually uh, does it as a monthly benefit and then divides that by 30, and that's how they get the daily benefit. Assurity does theirs in a weekly benefit and divides that by seven. Okay, so just a little quick understanding there. Um, so we've got our key features here. You guys know what disability is. Um, as subject to a maximum benefit of 60% of your weekly income, 60% of your gross annual. You, you know the, the drill there. Okay, so let's go through um, and talk about total disability after the elimination period has been satisfied. Okay, let's talk about elimination period real quick. You have multiple options here. So you can have your standard offering that you choose, say maybe a 07 or a 014 with a 13 week um, benefit period, three month benefit period. That is completely up to you. Um, so, but you also have seven sevens and 14 14. So it's just whatever you feel the most comfortable in selling. But after that elimination period, whatever it may be, has been satisfied, it's gonna pay the total disability benefit there. Um, benefits continued while the insured person is totally disabled or to the end of the benefit period, whichever is first. Benefits are payable for only one of two or more concurrent disabilities. So partial disability pays 50% of the total disability weekly benefit while the insured person is partially disabled and has returned to work part time following a period of paid total disability, but still unable to perform all work duties resulting in a loss of income of at least 20%. So basically if you return to work and you're earning 80% um, or less than you were prior to your disability, that's where this is gonna come in, okay? And as we saw up here, um, pays 50% if you uh of your total disability benefit if you return to work part-time okay okay so let's look at presumptive disability waives the elimination period and pays the total disability benefits for the maximum benefit period when an insured person suffers a permanent and irrevocable loss of speech hearing, sight, use of both feet, both hands, or one hand and one foot. So if something truly, truly horrible happens to you, then basically what they're saying is they're going to pay total disability. So your entire weekly disability benefit for the entire benefit period of the 13 weeks or 26 weeks of whatever uh, you signed up for if one of those horrible events happens, okay? Uh, recurrent disability pays a weekly benefit for a recurrent total disability if it's separated from the ending date of the prior total disability disability by a period of 30 days in which the insured person is actively employed on a continuous basis and not receiving any disability benefits under under the certificate or any riders. Okay, so this uh, new recurrent disability is, re is subject to a new elimination period and starts a new maximum benefit period. So what they're saying basically is if you have one disability and you have a 30 day period in which you are not um, under physician's care not under, you know, getting any type of disability and then you have a, a new disability, it's going to basically start a new, it is a new event and you'll be subject as such to a new elimination period and a new uh, benefit period. Childbirth. Childbirth, the insured person will be considered totally disabled for a period of six weeks for a non-cesarean. I love how they just can't say the V word, but a, a traditional delivery or eight weeks for a cesarean delivery, okay? Uh, the number of weekly benefits payable will be reduced by the elimination period. So. Again, in this example, if the elimination period is 14 days, that reduces those benefits by two weeks. So your non-cesarean delivery would be a four week benefit and your C-section delivery would be a six week benefit 
Organ donors pays policy and rider benefits on the same basis as any other sickness if the insured becomes disabled as a result of a surgery for transplanting an organ or donating bone marrow from the insured person to another person. So very cool. So that's something that can be done voluntarily, obviously, um, an organ donor, and yet it's still going to be paying you for the, uh, the disability. Mental and nervous disorder pays policy and rider benefits on the same basis as any other sickness if the insured person is disabled as a result of a mental or nervous disorder. Mental and nervous disorder um, related disability benefits are subject to normal elimination period and maximum benefit period conditions in addition to a total lifetime disability weakness weekly benefit limit for these conditions um, of 52 weeks if your max benefit period is 13 or 26 weeks. So what that's saying is basically um, you have a lifetime max on the mental and nervous disorder benefits of 52 weeks if you have the standard three or six month um, benefit period on your policy. Substance abuse pays policy and rider benefits on the same basis as any other sickness if the insured person is disabled as a result of substance abuse. Substance abuse related disability benefits are subject to normal elimination period and maximum benefit period conditions in addition to a total lifetime disability weekly benefit limit for these conditions of 52 weeks if you have a, um, a three or six month benefit period on your policy. Okay, same exact uh, stipulations as the mental and nervous disorder. Waiver of premium. Waives premium starting on the first premium due date after the insured person has been totally disabled for 30 days. Premiums continue to be waived until the insured person is no longer totally disabled or to the end of the maximum benefit period, whichever is first. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Accidental death. This is one of those benefits. Again, those little extra benefits that a surety does, it really makes them stand out. These all add up and make these policies so much better than the competition. So this benefit pays a lump sum benefit of 25 times the total disability weekly benefit if the insured person dies as a result of an injury sustained in a covered accident within 90 days of the date of the covered accident. So what that's saying is that you have a car accident, you pass away within three months due to that injury or injuries. Your policy is going to pay a lump sum benefit to your survivor of 25 times what your weekly benefit is. So let's say you have a, you, you're at the upper end of the income scale and you have a thousand dollar weekly benefit. That is basically a $25,000 life insurance policy built into your, your disability policy. That's pretty freaking cool. I'll be honest. Okay. Um, do, 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 survivor. I guess I should be reading that out loud, but I think I'm already past that point now. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Okay, here we go. So survivor pays a lump sum benefit to the beneficiary if the insured person dies while receiving total disability weekly benefits subject to certain conditions and limitations. Um, if the maximum benefit period is 13 or 26 weeks, benefit payable if insured received total disability benefits for at least six consecutive weeks. Lump sum benefit equals three times the total disability weekly benefit amount subject to a maximum of $3,000. Okay. Terminal illness pays a lump sum benefit if the insured person is diagnosed with a terminal illness with a life expectancy of six months or less and is receiving total disability weekly benefits subject to certain conditions and limitations. So in this situation, if the maximum benefit period is 13 or 26 weeks, benefit payable if the insured received total disability disability benefits for at least six consecutive weeks, lump sum benefit equals three times the, the weekly benefit amount subject to a maximum of $3,000. Workplace modification, uh, we talked about this on the accident plan in video one. Um, what this does is pays the actual costs incurred modifying the workplace 
to help the insured person remain at work or return to work. If the maximum benefit period is 13 or 26 weeks, benefit payable if insured received total disability benefits for at least six consecutive weeks, actual cost reimbursed limited to three times the total disability weekly benefit, not to exceed $3,000 for the insured's lifetime. Okay, so it's saying it's paying actual costs not to exceed $3,000, okay? Catastrophic disability rider benefit pays a lump sum benefit if the insured person is receiving total disability weekly benefits and is catastrophically disabled, requiring uh, assistance for at least two ADLs or activities of daily living for at least 30 days after satisfying the policy's elimination period. So the lump sum benefit of six times the total weekly benefit if it is a 13 or 26 week policy. So again, figure $1,000 um, weekly benefit, lump sum benefit of six times that. So very cool. And then you have your premiums listed here. This particular version is a 13 week benefit period with a 07 um, elimination period. This is off the job disability coverage only. Um, just like other carriers, they do have on the job as well. It's actually not a rider. It is a complete and total policy. So it's not a rider that's added on to an off the job disability policy. And that is that for your disability assurity training video number two. We'll see you in the next one.